Hi everyone. Welcome to day three. So in day three, we are going to learn uh, data driven approach, right? So data driven testing means execute the test cases with multiple set of data, right? So here, if I go over here in a last session, I just created the script with login functionality, which is the test data. Here we have hard coded the data in the script itself, right? So data driven testing helps keeping the data separate from the test script, right? And the same test script can be executed for the different combination of test data, right? So we can see why we need a data driven approach, right? Why it is important. Suppose if I go over here in a website, in this website, suppose if I want to validate the login functionality with the 100 different users. So if I add a username and password in the script, uh, something like this, right? If I hard coded over here, then what I need to do, every time I need to change the username and password, right? Username and password and execute the same script 100 times, right? Or else what I need to do, I need to write a 100 test script, test script with the username and different username and password, right? So both approach, right? Both approach are time consuming. So that we are going with the data driven framework, right? So here uh, we have created the script with the data. Data also we have hard coded over here. In data driven framework, need to maintain this data, right? Data separate from the you know, uh, we have a uh, different sources, uh, different sources like, you know, we can get the data from Excel or we can get the data from the database, right? So from the different source, we can get the data. So now we are going to learn how we can get the data from that Excel sheet. Suppose I'm just adding a different set of data in a Excel, then we are going to fetch the data in a runtime. Then we are going to validate, you know, Suppose if I want to validate, execute the same script in multiple times, right? Multiple set of data. So we can able to achieve using those things, right? So that's what we are going to start. So now I just open this uh, Excel. So this Excel, I'm just creating a username and password and status. Status something like, you know, it should be add a login successful or login not successful. If the username correct, valid username and valid password, the status would be login successful right so that should be updated over here so that's what we have a in so i'm just adding a username so in this application this is the applications we are going to use in this application this is admin uh, is a username admin123 is a password so i'll be added over here admin123 this is a password okay so if it is a this is a valid one so the next one i'll be adding uh, invalid one. Suppose uh, admin is a username and password I'll be making different. That is invalid one. So again, I'll be adding a valid one. Right. So now what happened if the execution will happen, right? After that, it should update that login successful or login not successful in the column over here. Right. So now I'll be uh, saving this. So before, you know, using the script, we need to close this sheet. Okay, so I'll just closing the sheet now. So where I have stored this data sheet, see here I have stored this uh, data sheet, right? So you can get the path of the data sheet from right click on this sheet, right? Go to properties, see here, this is what the data, go to properties and Go to security, you will get the path. So you just copy the path over here and you just paste it in your script. Right, I have taken the script over here. So now we'll start writing the script, okay? So first we need to do, we need to initialize the driver. So we'll, we'll be creating the data-driven framework now, okay? So what we need to do, first we need to initialize the driver. So you are ready with the test data sheet. Okay, now we can start writing the script, right? So while coming into that username and password, we need to get the data from the Excel sheet only, right? Instead of hard coding the data. Okay, so now we'll be first, we need to initialize the driver. So for that web driver, driver equal to new Chrome driver. So we are using 
Chrome drive, Chrome browser. So I'm just using the Chrome driver over here. Right now, uh, what we need to do? We need to launch the URL. Right. So driver dot get. We need to pass the URL. So URL will be. We can go over here. I just copy this, paste it over here. So this is the URL. Right. Once it is open, then we can maximize the browser as well. So how to maximize the browser? Driver dot. We have a manage. So we need to manage. So what we need to manage? Window. So what we have to do with the window? We have to do maximize. Right. So this is the way we need to maximize the window for the particular browser. Right. Once you are opening the uh, website. it should maximize the window then we'll be adding the implicit weight as well right so how to add a implicit weight so the same way we need to manage what we need to manage time time out we need to manage over here right so here we need to add a implicit weight so implicit weight so here you have to add duration dot of seconds so you can give 10 second or 20 second something like this okay so please remember this is i am using the version selenium 4 okay so selenium 4 i am using that is the way i am you know just written something like this this is for selenium 4 if you are using a selenium 3 right so if you are using a selenium 3 how we have to write driver dot manage dot timeout dot implicit wait so you need to add something like uh, first we need to add a seconds right then after that time unit dot seconds so this is the way we need to add it over here if you are using a selenium three right so why here it is you know you know strike out over it is that because in till selenium 3 this is the way we need to you know we need to write the script we need to add a seconds over there but now this is in the selenium 3 whatever they have added right this will be deprecated so you can able to see time out is deprecated over here so what we need to do we need to add a duration of seconds if you are using a selenium 4 right some site right if you are checking in some site that could be you know they will be using something uh, before version so you could able to see this is the way they have written in your site right so maybe if you are using a selenium 4 if you try to copy the six, uh, second something like like that it could be you know you know you could be able to see something like you know strike out over here in a implicit way because this will be deprecated so you need to add a duration of seconds if you are using a selenium 4 right so this is the way we need to add fine so now i will be command this line because i am using selenium 4 okay so once we have added a implicit weight right so url we have added a drive uh, launching the url then maximize then we have added a implicit weight as well okay now we'll be adding a file class that is uh, we need to import the file right so that's what we are adding the file over here so in the file class i'll be importing this file java right so here you need to copy the path of your excel file i mean that means test data set So just you have to add over here. Once you are up, uh, you know adding over here, then what we need to do? We need to load the file. So we have added the file right in a file class. Now we need to load the file. So using file input stream because we are going to read the data. So reading the data, we need to use file input stream class. Okay. So for that we need to use file input input stream. suppose if i am giving any variable over here then new file input stream right so file input stream also you need to import so here it is saying that 
this will be the constructor so we need to pass this file because which file we need to load so for loading the file we need to pass over here again it is throwing a add throw declaration okay so this is the way we need to write a script now we have loading the file so with the file what we need to do we need to load the workbook right so we need to load the workbook so for that we have a we have to call xsf workbook okay uh, workbook equal to new xsf workbook so here we need to pass the file right so we here we are loading the file right so we are we need to pass the loaded file over here so xsf workbook also we need to import this is a apache poi right so again we need to add a throws declaration now we are loading the workbook with the workbook what we have to do we need to open the seat right we need to get the seat so from the workbook only we need to get the seat so workbook dot get seat so we can pass zero because zero seat only i am going to open if you know that uh, name seat of the name you can add a name as well but now i am just going to get the first seat so that is index wise it will be coming in a zeroth index okay so i'll be just store it in a i mean i'm just opening the seat i just wanted to store it in a some variable so here if you see this get get sheet at right get sheet method going to return a xsf seat so i'll be storing xsf seat seat equal to then i can store something like this so xsf seat also we need to import okay so now we have open the get the seat as well so once we are getting the seat we need to go with the for loop because we have a number of rows so uh, iterations will be happening so each row has to has a two values right username and password it should take the value and it has to iterate till the how many rows are there till that it has to iterate so for that what i'll do i'll go with for loop right so we are opening the seat with the seat we need to go line by line and we need to fetch the data right so uh, that i equal to i am just starting from 1 because zero is my column header right i don't want to go with the header so from that seat only i mean the first next column only next row only i need to start so for that i can I'm starting with the i equal to 1 then i less than equal to we have a method right we are not sure now i am just adding three data suppose we can add a number of data so we are not sure how many data is there right so if you know the 10 rows is there then you can add a 10 something like this right but suppose if i am not knowing that you know how many rows are that till the last row you can able to get the data so for that we need to call the method something like seed from the seed dot get last row number so this is going to return as last row suppose if it is a fourth row is the last then it is going to return a four four so you can add, add i less than equal to four something here it is going to return over here okay now i plus plus so this is a for loop syntax right so i have added a test data in a cell Uh, I'll I'll open that. I'll open that seat. You know, I'll show you. Uh, see the data. So I have added a test data in a cell A two only. A two as a username and B two as a password. Right. Cell A two A two uh, A two is the right. A two equal to row number one and column equal to zero. And it reads first row. As a zero and second row as a one, right? So the first column A as a zero and second column B as a one, right? So this is the way it is going to. So that's the reason I am adding 
i equal to uh, 1 so the data is going to fetch from the row number second column second as well right okay fine so column is first column okay so, uh, second row first column okay so i will close this so now what we need to do we need to import the uh, data import the data for username first we need to go with username right so i will be importing the data for username that is xsf uh, we need to get a data from that you know cell only so xsf cell cell equal to from the seat right seat get row so get row of we can pass zero over here right from zero uh, username will be going to be the because we are going to pass get row of uh, sorry get row of i so get row of i that is one right i can i close the data i'll open that again so here if you see over here so get row of i and get cell of dot get cell of we need to pass zero because row is a i i equal to one only so here if you come row equal to one cell zero means column zero okay so this is the way one zero the value one zero value will be admin right the one one value will be the password right so this is the way we need to get get the cell data so get row of i first row and get the cell of zero zero is the okay so i'll be import this as well so now we are importing the data now right so we'll go with the finding element first we need to go with the, the script right so where we need to pass the username here we need to pass the username so i'll just inspect that so we have a id so i'll be using this id driver dot find element by dot id we can pass the value right dot send keys in send keys here we need to so we have a data is there in a cell right so what we need to do cell sorry cell dot get get string cell value right so what happened it is going to fetch the value of cell value okay cell value it is going to fetch right now the next uh, will be so the next will be we have you know imported that uh, username right the same way we have to import the data for password as well right so the same way we need to go i'll copy this so instead of i uh, we need to get the password so i is row is the same one so the column will be next one right so i'll be go over here in a one okay then we need to find the element for the password i mean we need to locate the so i'll be copy this password so id text password is there so i'll just copy that so here driver dot find element by dot id we can pass id text password dot send keys so here also we need to pass the same thing because we have stored it in a cell only over here so cell dot get string cell value so here it is going to pass the not this one dot get string cell value 
this one okay okay fine so now we are getting the data for the username as well and password as well so we need to click on a login button over here right so i'll be open click on a login button so id will be btn login right so what i need to do i need to click something here driver dot find element by dot id we need to pass btn login this one okay then dot here we are just clicking that because that is a button so just we need to click over that okay so this is the way it should be uh, it's going to be work over here till that you know till how much uh, uh, data is that till that it is going to execute okay it execute and it is going to validate that okay same way then we have we can write uh, you know status as well suppose in excel sheet what we have done we need to write some uh, status over here right if it is a valid username and valid password it should be add some value that is if the test case is pass or login successful something they have to add over here so for that as well we can write some of the script right so we can write uh, file so if you want to write so here reading the data what we have added file input stream right now i just wanted to write something in the excel sheet so for that what i need to do i need to call file output stream class okay so for that file out, output stream right file output stream file output equal to new file file output stream so file output stream this you can import so here you need to pass which file you need to you are going to write right so the same where we have stored this src right the same thing we can add over here right okay, something like this so now i added so how we can add because we have a condition is that if the test case is passed then only we can add some message if the test case is failed then we have to add a some other messages right suppose if suppose if i have to add a condition over here if driver dot uh, get title so i can get a title if suppose in this application right if your title is over here is open orange charm right suppose if i go over here i'll be execute the uh, before code then we can able to understand whether it is so here i just username and password btm login i'll be command this line so what i'll do before clicking on that i just wanted to uh, get the title of the page so as per the title of the page we can validate you know whether if it is here in this uh, same page this will be different title if it is a login we are getting a different title so as per that we we can validate okay so driver dot get title right so i am just getting the title before clicking on a login button so after clicking on a login button also i just want to get the title right so now i'll run this script data driven okay so now just a time being i'll i just command this so now i'll try to run this so we are getting that you know different uh, title so as per the title we can uh, you know validate okay so executing i'll close this see both the um, titles are same 
uh, meaning that before login also i am getting the same uh, title so after that getting uh, after login button also after clicking a login button also i am getting the same title so for that what i can do i will be getting the current url because if you go over here uh, this url is different if you go to login page login right that is also different uh, url so what i'll do i'll be clicking uh, suppose if i am giving a this is the url if suppose admin and uh, admin 123 so if you see over here this is the current url now i am not giving the correct valid password i am giving invalid password over here so if i am click on that what happen see you can able to see valid credential this is the url is totally different right so now what i'll do i'll just copy this url okay so here um, in this in this page if i try if instead of going with the title because both the page we are having a same title instead of the title what i'll do i'll go with the url so if the current url is this one right if the current url is this one then it is login is not successful else the login is successful right so this is the way we can write suppose driver dot get current url okay so current url will be current url dot equals we can add we can add a string what we have copied the url right so if it is same thing then what we need to do we need to go with we need to open the sheet and we need to update login not successful sheet dot get row of uh, i okay dot we need to create a cell create cell of two because uh, first will be the 0 1 two the third cell only we are going to update that is third cell 0 1 two okay so now i'm just adding a two over here dot set cell we are not getting the value we are going to set the value so set cell value right so set cell value i'm just adding a string so what i need to do suppose login not successful okay some message this message should be added over here in a excel sheet here okay, that's what we are going to update okay fine now if the uh, then if it is a login is not successful then what we have to do then workbook dot right write this file output here only we need to write okay then file output dot close so we need to close over here okay this is the one condition if it is else so else part also important right so else means if the url is this one login not successful else what we have to update over here in a sheet so suppose the same thing we need to update i'll copy this i'll paste it over here instead of that login successful right uh, same way close right if it is a login successful what happen if you go over here if it is a login successful right so login successful means it should go over here so what i need to do i need to click on this i need to click logout right first i need to click on this then i need to click on the logout because this is not a mouse over thing we, we need to click this okay so if it is a mouse over that is we need to use the actions class but now we need to click this okay 
so for that click i can use id is there right so i can use id i mean i mean login successful login successful means driver dot find element by dot id we can pass this value and dot click okay so we are clicking that so once we are clicking that then what we need to do we need to click log out okay so log out just go over here i'll inspect this log out we have a text is there right log out uh, link text is there so i'll just copy that driver dot find element by dot we can go link text link text will be this one okay then dot click right now so i hope uh, this will clear so first we'll uh, run the script right so then i'll explain again so how this is thing is working right so i'll run this before that i'll close this exercise right i'll close this now we'll try to run this script i hope it will work so we have added a three set of data now okay i'll run this login successful now it's clicking a logout then it's a invalid data then again login clicking so now it's clicking logout okay so three times the data is executing over here so see the successful terminated so now i'll open my excel um see here you can able to see the first one is login successful second one is login not successful the third also login successful so this is the way you know we have to write different set of data and we need to fetch the data from that database or excel sheet right so same thing we need to use so here i have added you know apache poi because uh, if the excel sheet is you know dot xls uh, xls x format this is the latest format so we can handle this type of format using apache poi right so that's why we have to use that apache poi you know so this one and just we have to configure in your project then you can use your project so this is the way we can get the data from the excel sheet in if you are using a test ng right test ng also you can uh, use uh, using the data provider you can fetch the data even from excel as well you can get the data using test ng also okay fine i hope this will be clear so i'll explain one more time how what we have done so far so uh, we are just initializing this part i hope you know that uh, launching that url right uh, maximize that window we are getting you know uh, implicit we are added so if you are using a selenium 4 you need to go with something like this if you are using a selenium 3 version then you need to go something like this okay now in the selenium 4 this is deprecated so you are not going to use anywhere so you need to go with this one only okay then uh, we are calling that file class in this file class the test data set we are added over here. that path we are given over here okay file input stream class we are calling that because we are going to read the data from that excel sheet so we are using file input stream class okay this is the variable we are declaring okay then uh we are passing uh, then we need to load the workbook so after file opening then we need to order, uh, open a workbook from that workbook so which workbook we need to open so that i'm just passing the file right this file we are loaded we are just passing the file so from the file the workbook going to be open and store it in a this variable from this workbook just we are going to get the sheet so sheet i have added you know uh, zero index you can give you know zero index if uh, the first sheet is zero second sheet is if you are you know using a multiple sheet then you can go with the first sheet and second sheet you know as per your test data where you have stored then we are using a 
far loop because for loop because we are going to iterate in a different uh, times no uh, how many data is that as per that it's going to iterate and it's going to fetch the data so that we are using a for loop here i'm just started from 1 because here our value is start from 0 means 0 is a header column so we need to start from 1 only so that's the reason we are adding i equal to 1 So i less than equal to we are using the method over here. So method this time we are having a only three set of data. So sometimes hundred data will be there. So many data will be there. So what happen? We we are not sure you know how many data is there. So it should you know get the data uh, row count from runtime only. Right? Runtime how many data is there? How many row is there? So it should uh, return. So that is the reason we are calling this method c dot Get last row number. Okay, then we are incrementing the i. Okay, so what happened then after uh, going with the seat, right? So we are going to get the data from the cell. So seat uh, using the seat, we are using get row. First you need to go with the row, then go to the cell. Cell means column. Okay, row and column. Row is the i. I equal to one. One. One is the second uh, row. The first row is a header. Second row, then get cell zero. Zero is a column. Okay, zeroth column only. Then we are using a script for a username and password. Right? Then clicking on the login button. Here we are adding a one more uh, validation that is login successful or not. Right? So we need to write some script. I mean, write some status over there in a third column. so that is the reason we are calling one more uh, one more class that is file output stream because we are going to write something in the excel sheet so that's what file output stream class we are calling over here then we are passing the file because which file we need to write something so file output stream we are, class we are calling and we are passing the file so here just checking the condition so whether the uh, driver dot get current url You can go with the current URL in real-time application. Most of the time, we'll be getting the title is a different title, so you can get title as well. Title is you know it's not going to be this much length, so you can use the get title and you can validate. If the get title is you know if it is in a home page, then you can say it's a login successful. If it is in a login page, then you can say the login is not successful. This is the way we have to write if condition as well. I hope this thing is clear. If you have any question, you just see me. Okay. Thank you so much.